Hello, welcome to Tori's challenge number four. We are going to be making some cute little pumpkins, um, just little some decor. And, and basically she's just practicing lining up the center. And these, because they're a Halloween decoration, um, if they're screwed up or she gets frustrated and doesn't want to do the piecing, she can still make them out of one solid piece, um, and there's still something cute that you can do. Uh, so let's get started. The first thing that we have to do is find something round. Um, I chose this plate and this plate. Okay, we're going to be doing these right here because I need some more of that size. So these are good this right here is like it's a medium plate this is a little saucer this is like a i don't know sandwich plate uh it's the perfect size for these when you're learning so i like this one but you could do these on up to a pie pan or you know you can make a big pillow out of them uh, as long as it's round you could just make it round yourself so what you need is now i made a little pattern and there's a reason why it's because we're going to make ours patchwork if you're not and you're just doing them this solid color like this no piecing um which does not look bad uh you don't have to make the pattern you can just you know make it round and go on and i don't cut mine perfectly on the line i have like six here and i don't have a really good I have a pair of scissors these that go through you know two three but i'm getting six and so yeah it is what it is i'm cheating then all you have to do is fold the paper in half okay and you don't if you're not patchworking these you don't have to do this part and then i folded it in thirds okay so we want this little wedge um now i tried them in fourths and it didn't look very good. It looked too symmetrical, okay? And it didn't look like a pumpkin at all. So I found that six make the perfect pattern. So basically, we're gonna cut these in half. And I'm gonna take this down to two just because it's rather thick. Um, so we're gonna cut them in half like so and again it doesn't have to be perfect so okay we've got those in half and these are a little bit thinner so they probably will do I think it's just that fabric because it's a little bit thicker cotton that my scissors don't like but all right so I've got these cut in half then I am going to open these up back up okay and basically i'm just going to cut them in thirds probably should do it with the ruler so i don't cut my pattern up but one okay the pattern over and like I said, this does not have to be perfect. It just has to be wedges. Okay. So, and see that one didn't even get close to it, but it is what it is. And then we're going to do that again for all of the pieces. All right. So let's see if my rotary will do all the pieces. <laughs> Don't know, but we're about to find out. I always get the first one like really good and then after that not so much oh my rotary went good off see it's my scissors so we've got all of these then the next thing that we have to do after i get this last one cut is lay it out and i will show you how we're going to do that because that gets there's just one little tip where you'll get it backwards and you go why did that happen so there we go all right got all my triangles 
So give me a few minutes and we'll come back and finish this lay them out. Okay, so I've got them all cut and there is one trick to laying them out and that's pretty easy. All right, so the first thing you want to do is lay them out in the pattern that you want. So I take and divide all my little piles and I do pay attention to uh, the lines on this one and I'll show you why here in just a minute. So we're just going to divide these against that and then of course we're going to have two, three, there we go. Now the, I took two pieces of each fabric and made my circle. So I had six circles to start with and this is going to make three pumpkins. Okay. So, and they're going to be the patchwork ones, which is what I want right now. Okay. So I've got all my shapes. Now here's where there's one little trick that you have to know. Okay. You can't just take them and put them in the same pattern. Okay. So the first thing that I do is I try to match up and grab because when I cut, of course, they're not all perfect. They don't have to be. This is a pumpkin. The more you practice and the more perfect they get, the better they look. But hey, so I want to start and have the biggest ones. And these look like I got them all about the same. So I'm not going to fuss with that. These look like I got them all about the same. Hitch, enough. Out of the bathroom. He is literally in the shower. All right. So these look like they're all about the same. If I had any that were huge, I would, um, or really disproportionate, I would make sure that all of them were on the same one. But it didn't look like I have that. So we'll start with this here. All right. We're going to start with one. All right. So here's my first wedge. And then I'm going to take and do my second wedge across like this. And I'm going to go and do it like so. And so. And so. All right. Now, here's where the little tip comes in or I make sure the stripes on this one go this way. So I'm going to use those stripes. And then if you look here, I have some, the stripes go this way and I will pair those up together. So I want those and those, these and those, and these and those. There we go. All right. And that's just the way I do it. Um, I like to have them, you know, kind of sort of go in the same direction. Now, another tip. When you're laying these out, you're going to lay them right sides together. Okay. And there is a reason for this. If you just make them all in the same pattern. Get some of the other way. If you just make them, you know, the black, the orange, the leaf, the pumpkin, you know, if you just do that, the two of them are going to come up reversed when you put your pumpkins together. Okay. And I'll show you what I mean. Oops. I have to do it upside down and make sure that they go. All right. Now, basically, when you do this, you're just going to start sewing the pieces together. And then you're going to sew the two circles together. Okay. And you're going to stuff it and go. Now, this one is ready to sew together. All right. So I will do that in a minute. But I want to show you when you lay these out like this
and you do this. And I know it sounds silly, but two will be backwards. You know, and it looks like you've got them all the same, right? I'm putting them exactly that pattern. Now, when you sew these, because of the way that they were lined up, the way that you put them, two of these will be backwards. Oops. So, when you sew it like this, okay, I've done black stripes shell, okay, for lack of anything else, okay, black stripes shell, black stripes shell, black stripes shell. Now, what will happen is when you turn it over to sew it together, if you line the black up, the stripe will be here and the shell will be here because you have to invert it. So, yeah, the, the only thing I can say is make sure that you're laying them. Don't lay them just out like this. Lay them on top of each other and then sew the two, okay? Because it will not come out. If you were to line up this one, then these two would be reversed. If you line up this one, these two would be reversed. It just doesn't work, okay? So make sure that when you're putting together, you line them up like this. All right, so I'm going to go over the sewing machine. And basically, you're just sewing these stitches together um, until you get in your circle back together. Okay, and you're going to do that twice. And then we're going to sew the circles together. Then we're going to stuff it and thread it. So. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine, and I'm just going to grab any two, and I am going to start sewing them together, and I like to line up the top, but you can just kind of, because they're not perfect, just line them up where you want them. Okay, I have leftover thread in here, um, because I'm working on something small, I do have my sewing machine set with the needle to the right. Back stitch. All right. Now, if you notice, I didn't back stitch in the center because we're going to sew over that several times. When you come to the last triangle and you've got them all done, the center is going to look cattywampus. It's okay because when you flip this over and you do it this way, see how it kind of lines up? You're just going to sew right down that and if you need to sew over any tips you can do that too so let me get that done okay so i've got all my little triangles put together you can see there's a little um nip where they come together in the center and it kind of points down that's okay this is not for perfection um the better you get the less it'll do i've got some flaws in these don't care this is just for home decor so you're going to take them and you're going to line them up and then we're going to go back to the sewing machine and we're going to just stitch around like so. Okay. okay, so I've got my little stitched all the way around. I don't worry about the strings, don't care, just they'll be all on the inside. So this is not a perfection. Um, Thing. it's just not it doesn't have to be perfect and then um, your polyfill will come with a little stick like this and I hold on to them because I really like to just these round things you can just push out corners with it whatever just make sure that you know you've got a good solid stitch here as we go Oops. there's a string through there and a string through there which I will nip those off because we know they belong on the inside um so once you get this hooked out and all that and turned and you definitely want to make sure that you get these sides turned because we're going to stuff this all right so i'm going to get these strings done up and then i'm going to start stuffing it with poly polyfill and i'll come back okay so now that i've got it stuffed with polyfill 
I am literally just hand stitching this little um, opening right here. And like I said, it, it doesn't really show, so it's okay to not be perfect, but I just whip stitch it. These, you want these to look handmade, so, you know, they are what they are. I just broke my string on my thread, so. All right, I'm going to stitch this up, and then I'll come back and show you how to make the loop-de-loops in it. Okay, so I've whip-stitched my little thing here, and it's not perfect. It doesn't matter, because by the time we get those uh, wraps in there, uh, it'll be fine. I'm using upholstery thread. You don't have to. Um, you can use yarn. You can use regular thread. You just want to double it, make it really thick, durable, I guess, um, stout, you want to be able to really pull on it, so, um, like I said, I just happen to have upholstery thread, so that's what I'm using, but yarn, jute, string of any kind, just, you just don't want it too wide, um, you don't want it too fat, all right, so I've got my string here, or my thread, and over the last five or six that I've done, I've kind of learned the best way to do this. So I'm just going to take and go down through this center, and I'm going to come up through this center. And this is trial and error. All right, so I just kind of move the needle around until I get it to where I want. Then I'm going to hold this right here. I am not going to tie it. I am not going to do anything. Then I'm going to loop around where the join is and I'm going to come back up and get it somewhat in the middle. Now this takes some doing <laughs> because you don't always get it in the middle. <laughs> and now I've lost my needle in there again. Okay, There's the tip of it. I'm literally just going to move this over and push down until I find where I want it to come out and pull. Okay, so once you get this going, it is super easy, but that first loop, I always end up stabbing myself, okay, um, just so that I can get the little spot. And again, I got to hold my tails, which have got me all mixed up in here which is fine, oops, but yeah, the first one that you do is always the hardest, all right, so, but once you get it going, you're good, okay, so I've got my first loop, okay, I am not even going to worry if it's actually on the line, I'm just going to kind of put it there and pull, then I'm going to put my finger here, and we're going to go around again. And this is why it gets easier. Once you get that first pull, you have your dent in the center. And you don't lose the needle. So, uh, yeah, it gets super easy to find the center because it's already sewed in place. And then once you get that next loop in, you're going to give it a good pull. And this is why you want upholstery thread or yarn or something because that good pull is what's going to hold everything in place and it makes that bubble on the edge and i'm not being super specific and don't let go of your tail because if you let go of your tail it's going to do whatever it wants um I'm not being super specific about where it comes up, just kind of sort it in the center. Give it a pull, wrap around, give it a pull, and literally, you're just wrapping around. I have one more to do. Do, do, do. And it's coming together looking like a little pumpkin. Okay, so let me do one more. Of course, by the last one, it's like super easy to find that center because it's all been pushed down. Now, I've got one on each side. 
Okay, I pull it the way I want it, make sure I've got it nice and taut. And then I'm just gonna leave a space and go down someplace else and come back up. Do this side. And then I'm gonna tie it off. And it literally is that easy to make a circle into a pumpkin. Okay, now I do go back and kind of adjust these because they're tied down. And the only part that I really worry about is this edge right here. I kind of want them around there, but it doesn't have to be exactly on the line or anything. Then I'm going to snip this to make the, uh, and as you can tell, it looks really good. It looks just like a pumpkin. Um, to make the stem, I have some black, um, what do you call it, uh, ribbon, and I'm going to do it with my hot glue gun. So let me go turn on my hot glue gun, and I will show you from the Okay, so here I am, I've got my hot glue gun in here, and like I said, I'm just going to put a little glue there on the end, and fold that in half. And do the same to the other end. This doesn't have to be perfect either. The, the lovely thing about this is none of this has to be perfect. So I'm going to let that cool. And then I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to, I just put one on the end there. And I'm going to do that. And there is my stem. Normally it opens back up. There we go. Okay. So it's right there and it's got its little hookiness and it's just yeah, a little stem. Then I decide which um which center I don't like the best. Okay, so I literally look at it this way and think, huh, I don't like this line right here. That looks okay. Okay, looks good enough to me that way. I like it better that way. It's just my preference. There's no right or wrong. So I'm going to take and put some hot glue right in there. And then I'm going to put my little stem right in there. And oops, looks straight. We're going to let it cool. And we have created a little pump. Okay, so this stem is just hot glued on. You could probably sew it on. I'm not going to. I mean, it's ribbon. You could sew it. I'm sure you could just sew it, you know, hand sew it on there. But I kind of like these like this. And like I said, I have ended up with several different kinds. Now, if you don't want to do the piecing, of course, we've got these solid ones, and I just did the round thing, then sewed them together, and then did the loopy thing and put the stem on them. So, um, yeah, and you can do it so that it's a little bit fluffier. You can do them a little bit flatter. You can do them really poofy. Like this one, you can do really poofy. And then you got all these little ones, big ones. Have fun with it, okay? Just a circle, cut apart, sew it back together, and then done. So.